Hey there, welcome back to the lab. I had a great time hanging out with you during our stream a couple weeks back. It was a pretty fun time. We assembled the isolated flyback converter, which provides both 5 volts and 15 volts to any high voltage analog circuits, gate drivers, or really whatever we deem necessary, whatever we want to put over there. We just need a little bit of power, so it's pretty awesome. 5 kilovolt isolation from primary to secondary side, 5 and 15 volt outputs. During the stream, there was an issue while getting our converter to output significant power. And that's because it was limited to just a couple milliamps, not to worry, we got that trimmed up in a hurry. Before we dive into some of that live stream content, let's walk through the schematic. So we've programmed a switch mode power supply controller to regulate duty cycle by using a basically a low pass filter from the gate driver, which sets it to at about 50%. Then we added a little bit of optocoupler feedback that tugs around on that default 50% setting. So it just peels back that duty cycle a little bit when the extra power isn't required on the other side of this converter. Basically, we're outputting 50% duty cycle by default and then pairing it back when the output voltage reaches the desired value. Naturally, the most critical part of this design is the transformer. If the transformer is not wound correctly, isolation will not be established from the input to the output of the converter. Now, that'd be a darn shame. And by darn shame in this context, I mean extremely dangerous. High voltage is one thing, but when high voltage is present and you don't expect it to be, that is a problem. Thankfully, I tested one of these transformers with a high voltage test to verify that the primary is indeed isolated from the secondary, and it was up to five kilovolts. Awesome. Now let's dive into that stream. The first thing that I saw during this stream was the less than ideal power handling. Basically what that turned into is we saw that 18 volts on our float rail. You know, so looking at the schematic, there's the float rail and then there's the 15 volt output and the five volt output. The two outputs are derived from linear regulators that are dropping down from that 18 volt bus. And what happened on that 18 volt bus is once the load got larger than uh, 10, 15, milliamps or so, it was pretty light load. But even at that light load, what we saw was the output voltage on that floating unregulated bus plummeted below 15 volts and the 15 volt rail fell out of regulation. Not ideal. So what, what we noticed during that stream is that there's about 10% duty cycle set by default. And that is not the design intent at all. Turns out we made a miscalculation in our resistor divider, so we tweaked that a little bit, and then we set that gate drive duty cycle to the intended 50%. With that done, well, we got a little ambitious. We were seeing, you know, 250, 500 milliamps, that kind of output current, like what we had designed. But I thought, hey, let's hedge our bet. Let's program this thing for 75% duty cycle. Yeah, let's go. And, uh, <clears throat> well, I observed that the zeners that are intended for clamping the ring, so you need to clamp a flyback converter to make it work correctly, because in that time before the secondary side diode is conducting, you can get a massive voltage transient on the primary side. Whoops. And, uh, well, some of that energy was a little more than what the circuit was originally designed for and our zeners were overloaded. So pulled that back to 50%, everything's fine, we pulled it back to 50% and uh, yeah, that was pretty good. The second thing that I needed to work on, the intent was to pull back on that feedback net in an analog fashion where we kind of balance out somewhere in the middle, right? Here's our default, here's the minimum and we'd slowly pull down. Turns out the current gain on both the optocoupler and the BJT is pretty big, so it turns more into a wild oscillation between minimum and maximum duty cycle. That's not really the intent. And what that turned into was a pretty annoying audible coil whine. So we've got a couple ways to move forward. What I did for now is I tweaked the time constant of that RC filter by reducing the capacitor on the feedback node. So we're still oscillating wildly, but faster, so it's a less annoying pitch. Well, at least to me pushing it up closer to 20 kilohertz or the peak of what human ears can hear. In the future, I might use an integrator or an op-amp low-pass filter with a pretty long time constant, which should hopefully bring us back somewhere to that kind of analog range. We'll see. I need to think about this a little more, but there's a couple paths forward to reduce this subharmonic oscillation. But long story short, it works. 
we get eight, 15 volts out and five volts out with the 18 volt ish rail ended up being around 19 or so with the zener biased perfection that's exactly how the circuit is meant to function the circuit is working very very well and that's all good and everything but well i don't think we've ever talked about flyback converters before so maybe we should take a moment and walk through the theory of operation right uh, this will be pretty high level not going to dive into the nitty-gritty details but for the curious these are pretty interesting switch mode power supplies. Rather than using the transformer as a transformer, we're using coupled inductors. Now to the lay person that might sound like the same thing, but it's not. See, a coupled inductor stores energy while the transformer does not. We are storing energy in the core of this little transformer and then re retrieving that energy on the secondary side. So it's like we put the energy in on one inductor and then it just magically comes out the other side. Cool, right? These things ring like crazy and are typically limited to lower output powers, but I've got a real soft spot for flybacks. I mean, how could you not? Coupled inductors! It's so cool! Anyways, we're driving the supply with a nominal duty cycle of 50%. When the output voltage reaches above 19 volts, thereabout, we start to get some significant current through that Zener diode and it starts to tug on the feedback pin of that switchboard power supply controller exactly as intended. In our case, like I said, we peeled back a little too hard, which led to that oscillation at a few kilohertz. Regardless, the result is annoying. Coil wine, not a power supply that doesn't function. It works, but it's not what I would call ideal. Not bad for a first pass of a crazy switchwood power supply feedback mechanism, if you ask me. I'll take operational over, you know, blowing itself to pieces. Basically, I'm loving this UPS prototype. I love what we got done with this flyback converter and I can't wait to keep going. We have a lot more testing to do and a lot more great circuits to dive into. If you like what you saw today, consider subscribing to be notified of our future videos where we'll talk about why we designed a new buck converter for the UPS and walk through our testing of the isolated voltage and current feedback amps. If you want to support the channel, consider checking out the products that we featured today through our Amazon affiliate links in the description. It really helps us out a lot. Thank you. If you think this flyback power supply is cool, let me know by hitting the like button on this video or leaving a comment letting us know what you enjoyed. Most of all, I hope that you learned something great today and I hope to see you again soon. So thanks for watching E for Everyone. Thank you for staying till the end. Bye.